Hello, my name is Lucas Woodrick, and today I will be giving a presentation over Relap 5's ability to model seawater as a coolant in a two-phase natural circulation system. To do so, we gathered experimental data from the NUEST lab here at Kansas State University, where they looked at different coolants inside of a closed natural circulation system. The two coolants that they used were deionized water and seawater. So, taking their rough experimental model and translating it into our Relap 5 model, we used a single hot channel where 15 nodes were used for the vertical heated annulus and 15 nodes were used for the top riser section, which was unheated. Then we had one cold leg as well as one hot leg and a single heat exchanger to ensure that we had a constant inlet temperature into our hot channel of 60 degrees Celsius. When looking back at the experimental setup, they used a glass tube to encapsulate the hot channel, which allowed us to look in at the flow regimes uh, across the different coolants. When looking over at the deionized water, we noticed a predominantly slug flow inside of the hot channel. Whereas looking at the seawater, we noticed a predominantly well-mixed bubbly flow. In noticing this, we decided to use the non-equilibrium and equilibrium model options inside of Relap 5. The non-equilibrium model was used for the deionized slug flow since it uses two separate equations of momentum and continuity to model the velocities of the fluid and the steam, whereas for the well-mixed bubbly flow, we implemented the equilibrium model, which uses a single momentum and velocity equation for both the fluid and the steam. The reason in implementing this Relap 5 model over the experimental setup is, see to, is to see whether or not we could validate our Relap 5 model's um, outputs with respect to the experimental data for things such as the mean mass flow rate, the pressure, uh, the mass flow rate oscillations during operation, and the not oscillations for the um, seawater case, as well as for the pressure drop over the entire system. When looking at the mean mass flow rate of the equilibrium model versus the seawater, we notice that it has quite good agreement between the actual modeled blue line data and the red squares of the experimental data. This also, had, this also held true for our non-equilibrium model versus our deionized water case for the mean mass flow rates, where the relap model is in blue and the experimental data is in red. Then when looking at the mass flow oscillation, the mass flow rate oscillations of the seawater versus uh, equilibrium case, we noticed that there were small perturbations in the actual uh, mass flow rate, which we accounted for as noise from the volumetric flow rate meter. Uh, when looking at the mass flow rate oscillations of the non-equilibrium versus the deionized water, we see that there's a large overestimation of the mass flow rate with respect to the actual experimental data. This could have been due to an overestimation of the void fraction inside of Relap 5 at low pressures. Then looking at the pressure drop over the hot channel for the equilibrium model versus the seawater, we can see that the, that the uh, experimental data does not match our Relap 5's model data. So we noticed that we were not able to validate this information with our Relap 5 model. However, the pressure drop over the hot channel for the non-equilibrium model versus deionized water was able to accurately represent the experimental data for a range of powers. In conclusion, our Relap 5 model was able to accurately predict the mean mass flow rate of the equilibrium model versus the seawater, the mass flow rate of the um, equilibrium model versus the seawater with respect to uh, looking at the actual oscillations over the time steps, uh, and then finally it was not able to accurately represent the pressure drop over the hot channel. Thank you for listening to my presentation.